we'll get back let's get back to the word of God because this is eternal unchangeable you build your life on this the winds can blow the storms can come but I've been grounded on the Holy One so earlier this week I preached a message on effective prayer for some folks and while I was doing that there was a couple things that really stood out that I would like to share with everyone tonight and so Jesus when we talk about effective prayer basically we just went through some things that Jesus told us to pray for and then we went through the three things you need to do to have effective prayers prayers that work prayers that get things done tonight I want to go back to what Jesus said and there's a phrase that uh, that he says that's recorded in the Gospels four times and it's this phrase watch and pray he says that twice that we should watch and pray not to enter into temptation then once he says we should watch and pray that we would be worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man and then the third instance is one we'll read here but isn't that interesting by the way when you go through and see what Jesus told us to pray for you realize that's exactly the thing that people don't typically pray for I mean how many people really pray pray the Lord of the harvest he sent forth labors into the harvest there may be some but normally it's you know, bless me and that's not the gospel the gospels we are a blessing at any rate so now let's get into Mark 13 and verse 29 so you in like manner Jesus now Mark 13 is Matthew 24 Luke 21 these are the end time speeches of Jesus when he talks about the last days and at the end of Mark 13 it says or at least in verse 29 so you in like manner when you see these things come to pass know it's nigh even at the door the end then it goes says in verse 32 but of that day and that hour nobody knows so Jesus is saying look you're gonna see these signs and you're gonna know that it's getting close to the end but he says nobody knows the day or hour when the Son of Man will return therefore what verse 33 take heed watch and pray for you don't know when the time is so he says take heed take heed to what all the things we're to teach all the things that Jesus taught us go out into all the world and preaching the gospel he also said teach all nations to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded to you he's saying here we don't know when the end's gonna come we have a feeling of the time and season but we don't know and he said therefore watch and pray for the very reason that you're in a situation where you know the end is coming but you don't know when you need to watch and pray we need to watch and pray because that means there's things ahead that we still need to overcome that means there's things that said that still need to be fulfilled and the only way that God's people are going to do that is if they watch and pray verse 34 for the son of man is like a man taking a far journey he left his house he gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and he commanded the porter to watch so Jesus said look I'm like a man that's going on a long journey and a man going on a long journey that has a great household he sets everything up so it'll run while he's gone so what does it say he does I'm like a man taking a far journey he left his house that means he's he's got a he he gets it all in order and then he leaves it because he's going on a journey he gave authority to his servants so what has he done who's first of all who is his house that's us and he's left us in really good shape he gave us authority to his servants and to every man his work so look at this you know as the body of Christ continues to grow as people come into the kingdom he gave every man his work we all have something to do 
doesn't mean we all do the same thing. Some people, some people are really good, for example, and really love to reach people on the streets. They'll, they'll, they'll get people saved out of bars. They'll get prostitutes saved in area, red light areas. And, and, and they just seem like they have a gift to do that. And that's the Lord. They've given, he's given them a work. And then others preach the word. Others just excel in their business and, and help, you know, move the kingdom forward financially. All sorts of things that people can do. The one thing we all get to do is come into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ is to believe his word. Yes. But he said, look, he's leaving his house in order is what he's saying. He doesn't just... You know, just leave his house and, and tell, and so the guy that typically prepares dinner doesn't have to do it anymore. He thinks he can go over and, and uh, you know, go out there and farm or something like that. He, everybody has his work. Hey, dishwasher, keep washing dishes. Farmer, keep farming. Stewards, keep stewarding. And when I come, I'll know if you've been doing the work. I'll know if you've been doing your job. Every man is work. And he commanded the porter to watch. So he, get, he has everything all set up and then he assigns somebody to watch. You know, just make sure everything's going in order. That's his job. Now it says in verse 35, watch you therefore. Okay, Jesus, he says, this is what it's like. This is what you're part of. And now you... He's speaking to me. He's speaking to you. Watch you, therefore. And there's that word to watch again. Be on the lookout. For you don't know when the master of the house comes. He might come at evening. He might come at midnight. Or at the cock crow. Or in the morning, which kind of goes along with the traditional four watches of the night that they would have. Watching means they would assign people. You know, Back then you have cities... And there's lots of people that want to, you know, other countries, other cities that want to come in and take it over. So you'd sign watches around the city so they would watch over things. And they'd sound an alarm if it looked like there was trouble coming. Well, he says, just keep watching and watch all through the night because you don't know when I'm coming. See, the very thing he started out and said, uh, uh, you have that day and that hour, you just don't know. So watch and pray. Watch. Keep your eyes open. If something's going on, pray. Lest coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. Now, this is one thing. When they would set guards on watch, they were not to go to sleep on their watch. Mm -hmm. Doing that could cause, could cause an enemy to come into a city. You could lose your city. You could certainly lose a lot of lives if you went to sleep instead of watching. Lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. Why did he say that? Because he assigned everybody their work. He set his house in order. And he says, now, do what I've told you to do and be doing it when I come back. And the, of course, in other scriptures, we know we can read about he's bringing a reward with him for those servants that have served him through the night which is this dark period until the kingdom comes. And then this is interesting, isn't it? So it says, let's suddenly come and find you sleeping. So there's one lesson. Don't fall asleep. Stay watchful. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But what I say to you, Jesus said now, he said, well, he was just talking to the, you know, 12 disciples or whoever was there. Jesus said, what I say to you, I say to all. Watch. And he said, I'm not just saying this to who's here right now. I'm saying this to everybody. Why do you think it's written in here? Because everybody that will ever hear this gospel, this is true for them. We're in a household. The master is on a long journey, but he is coming. And when he does, his reward is with him. Don't let him find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I'm saying to everybody down through the years, watch. Because we don't know what hour he's coming. So what is a watch? Let's look at that just a bit more closer because we don't, it's not a word we use as much. 
Uh, it's kind of start out more of a military term. They'd set watches around the camp. They'd set watches around the cities. So let's look at a couple examples so we know exactly what a watch is. In 2 Kings 11 and verse, 3, and then verse 6, and this was when they were, they were protecting Jehoiada, which was the legitimate heir to the throne from the king who was on the throne at that time, and they, and they were hiding him until he, could be, until he could be brought on the scene. And this is what it says. And a third part of all, now they had men that were part of this movement to protect Jehoiada till he could be throned. And a third part shall be at the gate of Sur. And a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall you keep the watch of the house that it don't be broken down. So they'd set men out there to watch so that the house wouldn't be broken down. That's what it means to watch. He, he, they, you set a guard, you watch, and you don't let the house be broken down. You don't let the enemy pass that line where you are standing there. That's your watch, that's your area, and if anything tries to come by you, you either step out and stop it, or you sound the alarm so everybody can join together and stop it. In Judges 7 and verse 19, so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came to the outside of the camp of this is of the Midianites in the beginning of the middle watch. So the middle watch through the night is somewhere around the middle of the night. So it's late and they, they, were, they came around the camp and they knew exactly when they wanted to come. It says, they came in the middle watch, and they had, because they had but newly set the watch. So they knew when the watch would change. And so when the, new, when the, when the guys that had been watching left, got relieved, and the new crew came on, right at that time is when they struck. Because at that time, it wouldn't quite have settled in yet. So there'd be a, a little advantage that they could take advantage of. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpet, broke the pitchers that were in their hands, and those 300 men routed the, house of, uh, the host of Midian yes. in the middle of the night at the middle watch, because their watch wasn't watching. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were taken by surprise in the transition of the watches. In Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 8, and there was a group of people that were conspiring against the Jews. They didn't want them to build Jerusalem. They didn't want them to build the temple. They didn't want them to do anything. And so, and they conspired all of these enemies together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Even though the king had given them permission to build, these guys said, yeah, we're not, we don't want that to happen. So they conspired against it and tried to hinder the work. Nevertheless, Nehemiah speaking, nevertheless, we made our prayer to God. What did we say? Watch and pray. We made our prayer to God and we set a watch against them day and night because of them. So they knew there was an enemy. They knew that enemy was looking for a time and a way to attack. So they prayed, watch and pray. They prayed and they set a watch. And this is the nature. That watch meant that, and by the way, that all the people working on the wall ended up participating in this. Because it says with one hand they held swords, with the other hand they built. Because they were all ready for the enemy because the walls hadn't been built yet. Matthew 24, verse 43. Again, this is Matthew 24, like we read in Mark, like Luke 21 talks about. This is the end time chapter. But know this, Jesus said, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered the house to be broken up. So if you know when the thief's going to enter, then you just 
I guess you can take a nap and get up in time to stop him. That's the thinking. But Jesus said, look, if the good men of the house had known when he was going to be attacked, when the house was going to be attacked, when the thief was going to try to come in, he would have watched and made sure it didn't happen, just like Nehemiah was doing for his people. So the thing that you find out when you look at this is, he said, wouldn't have suffered his house to be broken into. Jesus told us to watch and pray. Why? Because the thief is watching too. Just like Midian, they swid, there was a little weakness in the changing of the watch, and Gideon took advantage of that, and they routed the forces. Their enemy is a thief that is looking to break into our house. So uh, not only are we watching, he's watching. He's watching like any person, any military, any somebody who's trying to attack something else, you're looking for a weakness. You're looking for a way in. You're looking to see if, let's see, they changed the guard. He, he walks around now. And so, let's see, 30 seconds after he leaves, he won't be paying attention here and we'll go through here. That's how, that's how they strategize. Well, we have an enemy that is the enemy that puts all these strategies behind all these people. And we need to make sure that we watch and pray that our house does not get broken into. A general of the military, he can station a sentry anywhere. So, all right, you're the, you're, this is your post, this is your post, you guys watch. And he will expect them to be vigilant and faithful. He does not expect them to walk off the job. He does not expect them to conspire with the enemy. He does not, he expects them to be faithful, he doesn't expect them to fall asleep. He expects them to watch and pray and alert. And one of the ways, all, I mean, throughout history, there are stories where the enemy has gone and bribed somebody that was supposed to be watching so they'd look the other way and let the enemy in. Well, that's exactly what Jesus is saying we're not to do. We can't be, we can't be bought. We can't be bribed. We cannot... Be defeated if we will watch and pray. Yes. Mark, let's say that. I'm going to read that Mark, Mark 13, 36 again. Mm -hmm. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. He doesn't want to find us sleeping. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, the last book written, Jesus has a message to the seven churches and one of those messages revelation 3 2 he said be watchful so when he was here talking about the end time he said watch and pray be watchful don't that's coming suddenly don't let your house be broken into now here in the book of revelation be watchful jesus says it again be watchful and strengthen the things that remain and are ready to die for I have not found your works perfect before God. He says there's, there's a weakness in the wall. There's a weakness in your defenses. He said strengthen those things. Be watchful. Uh, Revelation 3.3 3, Remember therefore how you have received and how you have heard and hold fast. So what you've received is the word of God. What you've heard is the word of God. Hold it fast. Don't let it go. And repent. Because they had done some letting go. If they will not watch, I will come like a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon thee. Now why can Jesus say that? He's the master of the house. He's the general. He set us on a watch. He set us on our post. And he says, if you don't watch, I'll come suddenly and you won't even know I'm coming because you're not watching. And yeah, I will take account of my servants. And what are you going to answer? It says, and lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. Now, what's that talking about? Well, obviously, if you're, if you're, on, if you're in the military and you fall asleep on post, you will probably go to the the probably the nicer thing that could happen is you'll get thrown in the brig for a while, but it could be a lot worse. 
and it says in Matthew 26 and verse 40, and Jesus, now he went up to Gethsemane to pray, and all he asked of his disciples is that they would watch with him. And he cometh unto the disciples, and he found them asleep. And he said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Well, thank God we got the Holy Ghost now. It, Peter didn't have that. Now we have it. We have the Holy Ghost. It was a different man on the other side of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Now, the spirit is willing, and the spirit gives power to the flesh so that we can do what we're willing to do. And we can watch. Because Jesus wouldn't have said in, in Revelation 3 to be watchful and then fill us with the Holy Ghost, and that wasn't a watchful spirit. That was, you know, the Holy Ghost is symbolized sometimes by seven eyes. Seven lamps of fire, eyes of the Lord, look to and fro throughout all the earth. That's who lives inside of us. Talk about watchful. He can look anywhere in this earth, and he lives inside of us. So what kind of people ought we to be? Watch and pray. It says in Luke 21, in the end time chapter of Luke, verse 34, And take heed to yourselves. Now Jesus is talking again, and it's the same subject. When he's talking about the times, when he's talking about watching, he basically in all three Gospels repeats something very similar. Here he changed, here's a little bit different. Luke 21, 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with, I'm sorry, um, yes, this is his end time part. And lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come on you unaware. See, he said that day is going to come unaware to people that are asleep, to people that are in darkness, to people that aren't watching. That's not supposed to be his people because he told us to watch and pray. So if we're watching, if we're watchmen, if we're, if we're circumspect as we walk, watchful and prayerful, that day is not gonna come on us unaware. Doesn't mean we know the day and the hour, it just means we're ready whenever it comes. Because we're ready 24 seven. But he said, and now he's describing what he meant when he said, let me not find you sleeping. Here he says, Take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unaware. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Because I mean, people that, people that don't know the Lord, they, they have no spiritual perception, but even they know there's something going on because of the times, because of, of the darkness intensifying. But God's people, we've known it for a long time, getting ready. So what causes spiritual sleep? Your heart's overcharged. Now overcharged, <clears throat> the, the King James says overcharged, what it means is heavy burden. Your heart is burdened down. You're, 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 you're uh, with what? Well, it says right here, surfeiting drunkenness and the cares of this life. <clears throat> Excuse me. The cares of this life. Oh, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? Wherewithal shall I be clothed? You know, what's going to happen on the job? Am I going to make it through all of this? How am I going to pay my bills? All the things that cause people's heart to be overcharged, to be heavy, to be burdened, that puts them into a spiritual sleep. Because when you're all concerned about that, you're not walking in a watchful place. Because if you're watching, the thief is not going to break through and seal. And you're going to know, as we said at the beginning, the best is yet to come. Why? We have the great overcomer living in us. He said he knows what we need before we even know. He needs before we even ask him. So if that's the case and we trust in him and we know God's going to take care of us, we won't be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this world. Now, surfeiting, 
Surfeiting simply means, it, at the base of it, it means a drunken headache. And it's debauchery. It's gluttony. Same, it's the same thing for gluttony as it is for drunkenness. Overcharged for too much eating, too much drinking, you know, the things that cause you, again, to be sluggish, to be, to be catering to the things of the flesh, not the things of the spirit. Does that mean, does that mean that you can't enjoy a good meal? Absolutely not. He says he gives us good things to eat. He delights to give us good things to eat. But not to be overcharged with it, not to spend your life thinking about food, not to always wonder what about the next meal, or trying to eat something all the time, and just like just like you're not to be drinking something all the time. Water's okay, but I mean when we're talking about the things that people drink that don't do them any good, like alcoholic beverages. Revelation three two: Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. So now let's go into the New Testament. We've looked at some Old Testament examples. Let's go look and see a few things now. And we've, we've seen what Jesus has said about being watchful. Now let's look at a few exhortations in the New Testament so we can see what Jesus' men taught Jesus' people that they ought to be like and what record they left for us because this is the eternal word of God. Never changes. He says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. How many really know perfectly that his day comes as a thief in the night? And what that means to us, watch and pray. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes on them and travail of like travail upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. Watch. But you, brethren, you're not in darkness. See, when you're in darkness, you can't see. We're in the light. We're not in darkness that that day should overtake us like a thief. He said to us. Do you see people say, oh, he's coming like a thief in the night. Not to us. Unless we're overcharged, unless we're asleep. It, it says, that day should overtake you like a thief. He said, that's not us. You are all children of the light. Children of the day. We're not of the night or darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. So he said, watch and pray here. He says, watch and be sober. Serious about this. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. See, this is, he's, he's, he's laying out a parable that's so easy for anyone to understand. People sleep at night. People go out and party and drink at night for the most part because they feel like they're covered by the darkness. And they are covered by the darkness when they do that. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So he's saying, you're not, I love that scripture. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober because we're children of the light. Not the children of darkness or night. We're children of the day. The day star has risen on our hearts. We are here as the lights of the world. Not to hide our light under a bushel. Not to go back into the darkness. But to watch. What did he say again? Watch and be sober. Watch and pray. Keep your spiritual eyes open. Peter says, But the end of all things is at hand. But you therefore, be ye therefore sober. And watch unto prayer. Be sober, watch, pray. See, it's, they got the message from the master. And they're spreading it to the church. Sober, watch, pray. We're not of the night. We're not of darkness. Acts 20. Now Paul has run a good race. He's decided to go back to Jerusalem. And he's meeting with the Ephesian elders. For, and he tells them, you're not going to see my face anymore because it's said the bonds await me where I'm going. 
And it says in Acts 20 and verse 26, Wherefore I take you to record this day, I am pure from the blood of all men. Paul said, I'm pure from the blood of all men because I have not, verse, next verse, for I have not shunned to declare to you all the counsel of God. Paul said, I didn't just preach salvation, getting your sins forgiven. I didn't just preach healing. I didn't just preach Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. He said, I preached all the counsel of God so that you could come into the fullness of Jesus Christ so you could watch and pray. Take heed, therefore. Take heed just means exactly that. You've heard it, heed it. What, what somebody is, look, if, if somebody gives you instructions who's in authority and they said, all right, I want you to watch that street and stop any cars that come that way because we got an accident down the road, you got to take heed to those words. You got to go out there and do what he told you because if you don't, more people are going to get hurt. It's the same here. I have not shunned to declare to you all the counsel of God, so take heed to it. And take heed to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. In other words, he's saying to the Ephesian elders, he says, take heed to yourselves. You know, examine yourself. Take heed to yourself. You need to live this life that you're preaching to others. And, over, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, you need to feed the church of God which he's purchased with his own blood. Feed them what? Feed them the word of God. See, the problem Jesus talks about, the problem the prophets talk about, the problem that, that many verses in the New Testament talk about is shepherds who lead people astray, who feed them not the pure, un, the pure unadulterated word of God, but they feed them garbage. And it says, it says in the Old Testament, they lead them from the mountain to the hill. In other words, they start up on high ground, they lead them to low ground with all the doctrines of man and the things they bring out. He says, take heed, feed the church of God. Now, what does he say? Because, and by the way, if you're going to take heed, what do you have to do? Watch. For I know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And he said in another place, they'd come in in sheep's clothing grievous wolves not sparing the flock also of your own selves of you Ephesian elders here shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them see this is one of the things people people get up and they want to draw disciples after them I mean you had you had the disciple in the New Testament who wouldn't even let him listen to John the Apostle He's, he's, he didn't want John to preach in his church because he wanted the preeminence. He wanted to have his little following. He wanted to build his little kingdom. Well, we're here to build Christ's kingdom. Amen. And so he says, all right, all this is, I mean, you've got to take heed to yourselves. You've got to take heed to the flock. Uh, grievous wolves are going to try to enter in. People speaking perverse things. How do you counter that? by living and speaking the word of God, drawing away disciples after themselves instead of after the Lord. Therefore, verse 31, watch. See, it just comes back to the same thing. You know this, this is your job. The householder has assigned you a job, do it. Watch and remember, Paul said, by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. It's not that they haven't been warned. It isn't that they haven't been told. They just haven't watched. They haven't heeded. And now, brethren, now what does he do? Does he, does he say, now, brethren, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take uh, Josephus over here and Frederico over here, and I'm going to set them as, as over all of this work so that you guys don't get led astray. No, what does he say? And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. He commended them to the word of God. 
And so if somebody's preaching the word, he, that, he commends you to them because they're preaching the word. He commended them to the word of God. All the things he could have said here, he said, get into the word, live the word, believe the word, preach the word. I commend you to the word of his grace, which, will, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Yes. Hallelujah. Psalm 127, 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watches in vain. So you see, like everything in the Christian life, it's not all God and it's not all us. It's the partnership. It's God in us. It's God and us. It's God with us. And he said, if the Lord doesn't keep the city, they labor in vain to keep it. You can, you can set up all the worldly ways you can think of to try to keep people from trouble, to try to get people delivered to sin. And it isn't going to work unless the Lord keep the city. Unless the Lord, the, what, how does he do it? He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and delivered them. God works through the spirit and the word. And so should we. And we should watch. Because the watchman labors in vain if he doesn't, if he isn't full of the Holy Ghost. He labors in vain if he isn't full of the word. If God isn't in it, if you're not moving as a partnership with the Lord, one spirit with the Lord, he said it's laboring. Whatever you do isn't going to work. It's vain. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13. Just a very powerful one-sentence scripture. Watch ye. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. There's the exhortation for the church. Watch. Stand fast in the faith. Don't waver from the faith of God's word. And quit like, quit you like men, be strong. In other words, don't be a wimp. Don't run the other way when trouble comes. Don't, don't get down and beg and say, I can't do this. I'm waiting for the sweet by and by when all these troubles will be over. He said, quit yourself like men. What kind of soldier would that be in an army that every time trouble came, he got down and begged the enemy, go away. Instead of, instead of standing up with his sword and his shield. Wouldn't be much of a soldier. And that's what he says. Quit yourself like men. Be strong. Watch. Half held spears and shields and bows and habergens. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which build it on the wall and they which bear burdens with those that laid it. Every one of them with his hands wrought in the work, and the other hand held a weapon. That's exactly what the church is to be. With one hand we build the kingdom, and with the other hand we hold a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was next to me, Nehemiah said. And just in case, with all of that, the man with the trumpet's next to me, so if something tries to break through, we'll gather together and defeat it together. Yeah. So let's look at this one scripture to finish up. This is from the book of the Song of Solomon. You say, well, I thought that was all about love. Well, it is all about love. And there's nothing like strength to show love. If, if you have if you have a husband and wife and one of them is very weak, that isn't showing love. They should be strong together. So, Song of Songs. Behold, he, now here in the song we're seeing a vision of Solomon coming out of the wilderness. Song of Solomon 3.7. Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it, of the valiant of Israel. So, so now here, here's Solomon coming on his bed. On his, that's kind of like the couch they carried the kings on. And there's three score valiant men about it of the valiant of Israel. Sixty men around it. They all held swords, being expert in war. So who did Solomon get around him the closest? Those that held swords and were expert in war. Look, if you're the king... 
Or if you're setting somebody to guard the king, you don't want a novice. You don't want somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Three score men of the valiant of Israel. These were proven men. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man has his sword upon his thigh because of fear in the night. What are we talking about the night? They are on the watch. Because if something tries to leap out of that night, there's 60 guys with swords that are expert in war surrounding the king. Now, we surround the king because he lives right inside of us. So we surround him. He surrounds us. His banner over us is love. But he wants us to be expert in war. What's it talk about in the New Testament? Put on the whole armor of God. Learn how to take that sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and use it. Expert in war because of fear in the night. Because if you walk that way, you don't fear. Jesus would always say, fear not. I am with thee. I am with thee always, even unto the end of the world. Let's, let's, let's fear God and keep his commandments. And let's watch and pray. Because a householder will return. Amen.